Hey, it's getting really close to the end of the OpenRC project. At least, uh, it's almost to phase three, where I need to put it together. And it's getting crazy. So we already, we already did a video on the screws and how we were able to import from McMaster Car into Fusion 360, modify, print, use, whatever. But now, what about the bearings? I want this car to be as 3D printed as possible. Everybody's been asking what I'm going to be doing for bearings. Well, I'm going to show you. This is Joel. I'm... <laughs> I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. This episode of 3D Printing Nerd is sponsored by Matter Hackers. All right, the big question everybody's been asking me other than why don't you sleep or why don't you get some sun is what I'm going to be using for bearings for this OpenRCF1. It's 4X scale. I can't just stretch the big the bearings out into larger shapes. I need to find a way. And I thought I found a creative way. Let me show you. If you open up the materials list and you scroll down, you see ah, for the front wheel hub, the front axle, we've got a bearing, eight by 12 by three comma five. So this is eight millimeters for the inner diameter. This is 12 millimeters for the outer diameter. And this is 3.5 millimeters for the thickness of the bearing. What we can do is approximate that in Fusion 360, at least the shape, by multiplying each of those numbers by four because it's 4x scale. So let's create a shape in Fusion 360 that is 32 by 48 by 14. Here we go. I'm gonna hit C for circle. I already have a sketch started. I'm gonna go right here to origin. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna go 32 and hit enter. Enter, and there is our inner diameter. I'm gonna hit C again, and from origin, I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna go 48. Enter, enter. There's our outer diameter. I'm gonna hit E for extrude. I'm gonna pick this and I'm gonna type in 14 and hit enter. That's it, we're done. That was a great video, thank you. No, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. Here's where it gets interesting. This is the general shape of the bearing. But again, we're talking about metallic objects which have a, a better, uh, better clearance, right? Because th they can be machined to a, uh, to a finer tolerance, I think is the right word to say. So will this work? What we need to do is print it and find out. And I did. This is it. I'm looking at my playback right here. This is it. This was printed on the Lulzbot TAS6 with the Morse Struder. And it has two purposes. It has to fit inside the rim and it has to fit over the axle. Let's test it. This is an open RCF1 tire and rim and it's 4X scale. Does it fit on the inside? Ooh, it does. Look at that. It's, it's held in right there. Okay, so we know that this fits inside the rim proper. I have an axle. Oh no! Okay. So we know that the outer diameter of 48 millimeters is just fine. But we know that using our TAS-6 with the Morse Struder, the inner diameter is too small. So we need to make adjustments. Within Fusion 360, go to your sketch, right click, edit the sketch, change that inner diameter to a different number. And we need it to be slightly larger. Let's test 33 millimeters. I'm gonna hit stop sketch, and of course it's fusion, so any changes you make to the sketch propagate to the body that you've uh, extruded from that sketch. As long as everything works out fine, uh, and as long as fusion doesn't crash. So now, we have a shape that has a slightly larger inner diameter. Let's print it and test it. Here's the axle. This is the one with the slightly larger inner diameter. Ooh. It's a fantastic fit. And it spins. And here's why I think using PLA in this shape for a bearing is going to be fine for the car that I'm building. The layer lines in prints are horizontal, right? So the layer lines go this way, the layer lines go this way. If I combine the objects so that the layer lines are along the same axes, I'm not scraping against layer lines. I'm actually using the continuous layers to essentially act like a smooth surface to rotate on. Not bad. It's not nearly as effective as a bearing, but I'm not looking for bearing performance. I'm looking for something that's 3D printable easily and that will work at 4X scale for this particular build. 
I think that works well. Let's print another, let's put it together, let's see if it'll roll. All right, I got myself another one. This one's in pink Matter Hackers filament. This was the gray. This was the pink. This is for you, Heather. Hashtag 3D Pink Mafia, just for you. All right, let's take this one that we printed out. We'll put it in the center of the rim and it fits just great. Now what we need to do is put the axle through. Let's put the pink one right here. Okay, so that goes right there. And now it supports the tire and the rim. Let's use this end cap right here. That goes just like so. And then a 3D printable screw goes in this side. <laughs> I'm gonna use a chisel as a screwdriver. I know I'm not using a screwdriver as a hammer, like I should be, but this will have to do. That's in good. One more piece. We got this piece right here. This goes on just like that. And then this part is what hooks up to the front arms and allows the wheel and the rim and everything to turn. Let's get my one screw left. Let's put that in. And again, chisel as a screwdriver because I'm all about safety. Oh. Okay, we are tight. Does it spin? <laughs> it's not smooth, but if we back off the tension just a little bit, just a, just a, just a tiny, tiny little bit. Come here, you. Okay. Now I bet it'll spin better. Look at that. There's no bearing in there. This is 100% 3D printed plastic, including the screws. And it's spinning just fine. I wonder what would happen if we had all four tires, rims, all four wheels using 3D printed bearing shapes. I wonder if it would work. Oh yeah, it works. And you'll get to see that soon. But I just want to let you know that in a project like this, don't limit yourself to the exact things that are in the spec if you're making it bigger or smaller. Try to adapt your design to something that will make it easier or, or better. Something like this. A bearing would be really complex in this shape and having to find one that's perfect in size would take a lot of time and a lot of effort and I don't think it's needed because I think with a correctly sized 3D printed piece using the layer lines in the same axes as the layer lines of the axle and you get smooth motion and a supported configuration. This is fantastic. I'm so glad this works. All right, I hope that helped you out and I hope that inspired you to create some awesome things for your designs and realize that bearings are awesome, but if you just need some simple motion, there's no reason why you shouldn't try something like this first. It's far less complex. It's far less prone to failing. Plus it's kind of cool, right? I mean, this whole thing, this whole thing is 3D printed, 100% plastic coming from one of my desktop 3D printers. I find that kind of cool. All right, well, that's it for this. I know this was a quick little video. I hope it does help. I hope it inspires you and I hope you learned a little something. Plus, we did have a little fun along the way. Well, that's it for now. I gotta get packed up for Murph. The Midwest Rep Rat Festival is going on. I hope to see you at Murph. I'm really excited. The Open RC will be there. I would love for you to come see it, take a picture with it, and throw me a little high five. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna call it good. I'm gonna call it good. I gotta go pack. I love you guys. Don't forget to hug each other more, as always. High five.